Hello Year 10s and welcome to uh, this marking video on using transects and quadrats. Um, make sure you have your two coloured pens ready, your blue pens to write notes and your green pens to mark. So quiz question one, so some students were investigating the distribution of some plants growing in and around shallow stream and they sampled along the transect line. Now just to remind you, a transect means this is a, like a tape measure that we put across. So here is the transect that they've put across the tape measure and they sampled along this line. And when I say sampled, they are using quadrats. So these square frames to sample and count the organisms, or in this case plants, along the transect like this. And we have a lot of data here. We've got different zones over here and all the different types of organisms on the left. So, firstly, name, and I'm going to box my command word, name the metal square placed along the transect. It's called a quadrat, you should know. Name one species that grew only in the driest conditions. So the driest conditions are those that are outside of the water. So this is aquatic because between here and here, we have water. And on either side, we don't have water and I would say the ones growing in the driest conditions are the ones at the end which is the white clover. Nay, only one species grew on the marsh, the swamp and aquatic zones. So we're looking for marsh, swamp and aquatic. Which species grew on the marsh, swamp and aquatic? So we need to look at one that grows on all three. It's the reed sweet grass. And finally, duckweed grows floating in water what evidence do we have to show this in our results so let's find duckweed duckweed is over here and we can see it kind of matches to where there is water so i know as a result the duckweed is only found in swamp and aquatic zones swamp and aquatic um, and that's the reason why it only shows it's floating in water next question Question two, some students were asked to investigate the distribution of clover, clover is just a type of plant, in a field of grass. They noticed that clover grew in patches amongst the grass. So here's our diagram and we have to now estimate the number of squares that the quadrat covered with clover. And how I would do it is when I count, I put a cross so I know I don't double count the square. So there's one, two, three so these three are completely filled then the rule is if more than 50 percent is covered then we also include it so this is more than 50 percent that's four i would say five six seven i would say there are seven there potentially could be eight with this one here as well so if your answer was seven or eight you get the mark how describe how you work that out so to work that out, I said you're counting the whole squares that are covered, that are covered, or you're counting that uh, are fifty percent that are covered as well, or half the square that is covered as well. Now you have to use your answer from part B I. So this was the answer is seven or eight to calculate the percentage of quadrat covered by the clover. And there are four steps to do this. The first step is you need to know how many squares there are in total. So in total, I know there are five squares going this way and five squares going this way. I multiply them. I know there are 25 total squares. The second step is to do 100 divided by that number. So 25, 100 divided by 25, tell your screen, one, two, three. Yes, it's four, of course it is. Um, and those, those are the number, that is the percentage of each square. And then finally, you are going to write down your covered squares again. So in this case, I'm going to use, for example, seven. And the final step is to do seven times four. Seven times four, of course, is 28%. But they did accept as your answer or 32% if you use the covered squares as eight. Next question. Some weed killers are selective. Selective weed killers kill a broad leaf weed plants, but do not kill narrowed leaf weed plants. Here's a diagram showing on a grassy lawn. 
Some students investigated the effects of selective weed killer on the weeds growing in the lawn. They used this uh, 0 0.5 meters times by 0 0.5 meter quadrat. Now, whenever you see this on a note on the side, I would always work out the area of the quadrat. So we do 0 0.5 times by 0 0.5, and that equals 0 0.25 meters squared. So I know that as the area of my quadrat. We keep reading. The lawn measured 20 meters long and 10 meters wide. Again, when I see uh, an area of the lawn, I want to calculate the area of the field. So to do that, I multiply them together, so I get 200 meters uh, squared. Again, it might not ask me that in the question, but it's just good to annotate your work as you are writing and reading. This is the method used. So I'm gonna draw it out and see what happens. So the, they divide the lawn into two halves, A and B. They place five quadrats in different positions on side A. So one, two, three, four, five. They place more, five more quadrats on side B. One, two, three, four, five. Then they count the number of weed pl uh, plants in each quadrat. So they were counting how many were in each quadrat. They sprayed side A with weed killer solution. So if they are spraying side a weed killer solution we know that the broad leafed weed plants are going to die but we know that the narrow leaf plants narrow leaf grass uh, plants will survive then they repeated oh, and the spray same side b but with water so there's no weed killer instead on side b it is water instead and they repeated it after two weeks so let's have a look at some questions suggest a method on how the student should have placed each quadrat now there are two methods we could use the first one and both methods are to place them randomly the first method you could say is throw the quadrat over your shoulder the second method you could say is use a random number generator with coordinates Give a reason why you had to use this, and again, it's randomly. It's so that we don't, uh, we avoid bias, because it wouldn't be fair if you went over here. You went, oh, there's lots and lots of weeds here. I'm going to put my quadrat here, and I'm going to decide to put my quadrat here, because then you are being biased to your results. You must place it randomly. Next question: Explain why. The students use water on one side of the lawn instead of weed killer. So we looked here, one side was weed killer, whereas the other side is water. The reason why, we want to use it to compare as a comparison or as a control. Next question then. Question four. So some students wanted to find the number of thistle plants growing in the lawn, and they placed 10 quadrats at different positions. Each quadrat measured one meter by one meter. Again, when you see the meter of quadrat, you write a little note on the side, and I know I do one times one, which is of course one meters squared. The student counted the number of thistle plants in each quadrat. So which method should the students use to decide where to place the quadrat? Again, we're looking, we're looking for the word randomly. And that's how we know. So place them as even as possible. No. Place the five quadrats in the area with many thistle plants and only a few. No. Again, the word we're looking for is randomly. And we take this one here. Here are our results. The first, first thing you had to do was to complete the table. And you had to count the number of thistles there were in each box. And I've done them here. I've added them all up. And I have 15. You had to then calculate the mean and you should all know the mean you add the numbers up and you divide by the number of quadrats in this case there are 10 so I do 15 divided by 10 and that equals 1.5 we leave it with the decimal points that is fine then we've got the lawn and that lawn we found out measures 12 meters by 10 meters wide. So now we can find out the area of the field. And the area of the field is 12 times 10, and that's 120 meters squared. And use your answer to work out the thistle plants. Now here is a really key equation that I'm, I'm going to highlight that you need to remember to work it out with all your quadrat questions. Mean multiplied by area of field over area of quadrat 
this is the most important equation that you need to remember to make sure that you get the right answer. So here I've got the mean, I've got the area field was 120, my quadrat was just 1, so I do 1.5 times by 120 and that is 180 thistles. How could the students make it more accurate? Well, the most important thing is they can repeat, but in the mark scheme we have to be very clear. They don't just repeat, you have to say in different places because it wouldn't be right if you place the quadrat in the same places. It wouldn't be right if you place one, another one here, again, another one here, again, another one here, in case it has to be random again at different places. Question four, again, I think there's a mistake there, but some students investigated the size of population of dandelion plants in a field, and here they have the field here. Now, when I get something like this, I'm reminding myself that I need to uh, work out the area of the field. Now, in maths, I've been told that you split your, uh, if you have a shape like this, you split it into two. So here is A and here is B. I work out A, so I multiply these two numbers together, is 45,000 meters squared. And I have area B as well, which is I multiply 100 by 100 is 10,000 meters squared. I add them up and I now have 55,000 meters squared. And this is the area of the field. I now read, oh, look, they have a quadrat here. So I know the area of the quadrat is one meters squared as well. Then we have the, uh, the pupils' results. So when I get a number like this, I work out there I've got 10 quadrats that they made and the total was six. So there I can think of how do I know the mean? So to work out the mean, I do 60 divided by 10, which is six. So I know there's a starting point somewhere with the mean. And, oh, there we are. And we had to work out then and estimate the total number of dandelion plants in a field. So we had to use our answer to calculate and we need to use the diagram and the table to calculate. So, and the most key bit, and I feel that some of my pupils in my form forgot you need to give your answer in standard form. So the first thing we do is we write out what we know. Firstly, we calculate the mean was 6, so we write the mean is 6. 60 divided by 10 is 6. Then we need to write down again what we know in terms of area of field. We worked out was 55,000 meters squared and the area of the quadrat, which is 1 meter squared. Then we need to add in our most important equation here. And our equation, mean times by area of field over area of quadrat. And we substitute, nice and easy. And our final answer was 300 and 30,000 dandelions. But again, you must give your answer in standard form. So we convert that into standard form. We count one, two, three, four, five. So it's 3.3 times 10 to the power of five dandelions. Here's a final question. And I know some of my pupils were really struggle, struggling with this type of question. So here we have a transect. Again, they call it a belt transect. A transect just means a tape measure. We have our transect and it goes across. And again, we're just sampling with our quadrats at regular intervals. We are not doing it randomly because we are seeing the difference of a plant from when you have uh, water, when it's submerged in water, and also when it's uh, to the near to the top of the water as well. So, suggest and explain two reasons why there is a much more population of these plants, Nutella plants, found amongst these plants. So we can tell just by the height. So we can tell these Potomogonton plants are much taller than the Nutella plants, which are shorter. Suggest. Now this is a question where you might not been told in class. This is just a suggest question. Some examples. There is competition for light. These are taller and so they are more likely to gain more light. Of course, light is required for photosynthesis. I need to add that in as well, that light is required for photosynthesis. I'm going to check, have you written it in? 
that's one mark composition for light and the second mark because the plants are taller what else we can say competition for nutrients again if you have a taller plant you're more likely to have longer roots so taller plants have longer roots so that's one mark for the nutrients and the second mark for the roots so in total there are four marks there i understand it is a tricky question final question describe how you would use a belt transect technique to measure the abundance and distribution of plants which live in the bottom of the shallow lake so the first thing i recognize again we're using transect which is a tape measure is that you need to use a measuring tape or tape measure second mark is that because you are placing your quadrats not randomly you are placing them at regular intervals so that's the second mark you use your quadrat you need the, both the quadrat and regular intervals to get the second mark and the final mark is that of course once you place down your quadrat you are going to calculate the number count the number of species inside the quadrat make sure you give your final mark at the front it's totally out of 31 and have a lovely day